This is Golf with Jay Delsing. A two-time All-American at UCLA. A participant in nearly 700 PGA Tour events. Seven professional wins to his credit. Over 30 years of professional golf experience. A member of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Hey, welcome to Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. I got Pearly with me this morning. John Pearls, how are you doing this morning? Doing fine, Jay. Looking forward to doing this uh, kind of wrap-up show. It's going to be fun. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. Well, we formatted the show like a round of golf, and the opening segment is called the On the Range segment. And then the On the Range segment, we're going to just set today, we're going to set up what the show's got. We also want to thank my buddy Jeff Thornhill and TaylorMade Golf for supplying another 52 weeks of, of golf balls. So, guys... And gals, jay at jdelsingolf.com. Send me an email. Put the, the word balls in the description or in the base of the email somewhere in, the, um, in that email, and you will be entered to win a dozen TP5 golf balls, which we uh, really appreciate. So that's jay at jdelsingolf.com, and that's compliments of TaylorMade Golf and Jeff Thornhill. All right, so, John, what we're going to do, is, it's going to be kind of fun. We've got a message from Ron Doherty, Doherty Business Solutions, kind enough to be the title sponsor in 2023 of the Golf with Jay Delsing show. Well, Ron happens to be the chairman of the 2023 Heart Ball here in St. Louis. It's a big deal. They raise a lot of money for heart health. And so we're going to hear from him at the end of the On the Range segment. But Pearl, the front nine, we're going to have some fun. We're going to talk about three or four things that we thought were incredible about 2022. We're also going to talk a little bit about the letter from Augusta National and what the impact on LIV and the other majors is going to be. And I'm excited about that, Pearl. Absolutely. There's there's so much happening at the end of the year. It, it, it kind of was perfect for what happened this year, which was an awful lot. Yeah, for sure. And then on the back nine, Pearl, we'll, talk, uh, we'll give a couple uh, handful of players to look out for in 2023 and who are – who are kind of going to be our players to watch. We can also go back over some of the things that we did, our predictions for 2022, some we want to talk about, some we'd rather forget. And then on the 19th hole, we're going to talk about the five uh, top things that we're looking forward to talking about in 2023. So we got a lot of really fun things to, to hit up on this week's show. I also want to reach out, Pearl, Happy New Year to you and your family, and Happy New Year to all of the listeners out in the greater St. Louis area. Pearl, I'm going to run the tip of the cap. The tip of the cap segment's brought to you by the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood and our friend Colin Burnt. Colin, happy new year. Thanks for the support. 314-966-0303 if you need any sort of vehicle, not just a Volkswagen. Colin's your man. I'm tipping my cap to the St. Louis sports fan. Between baseball heaven and the best sports fans in the country, all I know is these guys never disappoint when it comes to supporting anything sport-wise, especially golf in the St. Louis area. I just love and appreciate what they've done for us. The 2022 Ascension Charity Classic was a smash, and we're going to kill 2023, and it's all because of these fans and the support they get. So we appreciate that support, and that's the tip of the cap, and it's brought to you by Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood, 314 966 Zero three zero three. All right, we're going to go to our buddy, Ron Darty. He is the CEO, founder of Darty Business Solutions. He's also the chairman of the 2023 Heartball. Ron, welcome to the show. And tell us what the Heartball is all about and why you're involved. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Jay, I, I first started working with the American Heart Association a few years ago, and I just was so impressed with how many people are, are helped, how many people benefit from the American Heart Association. And, um, and, and then just now, a few years later, I was asked if I would be the chairperson for the Heartball campaign for the American Heart Association. And I said I would be delighted to do that. And I, I asked that the theme of my campaign be health equity. And the American Heart Association was happy to uh, agree to that because that's a big part of their vision and mission as well. So health equity, and this is sort of how it tied together for me, Jay, the, uh, the American Heart Association and health equity relates to a couple of other things that 
that I'm very serious about. One is a program called Access Point, which is helping young, uh, under-resourced students move from high school to a well-paying career in information technology within a year after graduating from high school. I put that program together that we're, we're ramping up our fourth, fourth cohort now. We have companies like, like Express Scripts, uh, MasterCard, Edward Jones, Cigna, Bear participating in the program, and, and hundreds of lives are being changed. And, and, and so that's all about equity in education, equity in jobs, the American Heart Association, equity in health. And one other linkage that I really liked is the, the APGA golf tournament, which was uh, a part of the Ascension Charity Classic. Uh, scenario that uh, Ascension and Nick Ragone uh, put together for here in St. Louis. I know you've covered some of that, uh, uh, Jay, on, on other podcasts. What a wonderful, wonderful uh, situation that has been. And and I was proud for Darty to be the presenting sponsor of the APGA tournament because that's focused on helping bring more equity into the world of golf. So, so equity associated with the APGA, with Access Point, the American Heart Association, and it just seemed like a wonderful combination to me, each one of those helping the other. And so I was just delighted, delighted to be able to step into that role. This coming February, February 25th at the Ritz-Carlton, and there's still tickets available, and I'll give you a number in a little bit, we're all going to be getting together and celebrating this night. Absolutely. It's the 25th. And I'll tell you what, Jay, this is just something that we decided to do recently. You may or may not know that Darty has a company band. Darty has a company band and I play the harmonica and sing in the Darty company band. And so the Darty company band is going to do the after party for the hardball. So come to the hardball. Uh, if you're, if you're able, uh, we'll, 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 we'll tell you how to, how to, how to arrange that support the American heart association and 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 dance the night away with the darty party band in the after party now wait a second i've actually seen your video you guys are good i I, i'm a music guy i'm terrible i probably shouldn't even be allowed to listen to music because i don't have any sort of music ability but you guys you guys get to jamming pretty good there well i appreciate that jay we have a lot of fun with it you know we 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 mostly just raise money for good causes we do the uh, battle of the corporate bands for the united way we, 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 we do uh, fund, fundraisers for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. We'll be doing this for the American Heart Association. And, you know, Jay, one, one other thing, just real quickly about the American Heart Association. As I said, I was, I was so impressed with how many people they help. And, you know, one of the ways that I think about it is at some point, probably just about every one of us is going to benefit from the work that the American Heart Association does. And when we're there on the operating room table, wishing that there was a little bit better procedure. Well, you know, we could, we could donate then, but it would be so much better to donate now. <laughs> we'll oh my gosh. The benefit when we need it. It's so true, Ron. And you know, as a community, we're, we're to get in together on all of this stuff. So if, if yeah. one of us is down or one of us is ill or somebody is not being uh, given the type of uh, health um, opportunity, as you call it, that, that some of us have, it's, it's not good for any of us, is it? It's really not. And, you know, Jay, I was just looking at just a list of some of the advancements made possible by the American Heart Association. CPR techniques, heart transplant capabilities, cholesterol inhibiting drugs and artificial heart valves. So artificial heart valves, who the heck would need that? And you know what, Jay, my grandson just had surgery and had an aortic heart valve, artificial heart valve. Uh, 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 he he was, that's the procedure that was done. He is doing so well. He's, he's, he's doing fantastically well. And without the research that's been, been done by the American Heart Association and funded by uh, all, all the great people who support the American Heart Association, you know, he wouldn't be here. No. And that is such a great story. So this is the, the 22, uh, the 2022 and 2023 heart ball. It's going to be February 25th at the Ritz-Carlton, you can reach out to Beth Ozeroff at 
five six two nine ron one of the things i'm so appreciative for you jumping on with me one of the things that stuck out the mission for the heart ball is to be a relentless force for a world of longer healthier lives and it just fits in with so much of what you guys at darty and your team do for our community i thought this was just a natural i really appreciate that jay hey there's one more thing i've got it right here in front of me just text seven one seven 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 71777 and then and then put in darty for the message d a u g h e r t y and and it'll it'll show you some other ways to participate with uh, with the hardball but but jay I, just as we wrap up here i want to let you know how much i appreciate working with you you're a force for good in the community and i'm just i'm just proud to do these things with you anytime my friend anytime and i, I look forward to seeing you at the hardball February 25th at the Ritz-Carlton. We're going to have some fun and raise money for a great cause. Fantastic. Love it. Okay, folks, that's Ron Doherty, and that's been the On the Range segment. So come back, and Pearlie and I will join you on the front nine. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. That was On the Range with Jay Delsing. For news on the latest golf equipment, tips, and to ask Jay a question, log on to jdelsinggolf.com. Coming up, it's the front nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. I love having Doherty Business Solutions as the title sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing show. You already know that they're the number one largest IT consulting firm and the largest software developer in the St. Louis region. You also know that there are over 2,500 Darty teammates in 30 states and three countries around the world. But what you may not be aware of is what Doherty Business Solutions does right here in our own community. They were the sponsor for the first Advocate PGA event at Glen Echo this past September. Doherty Business Solutions was also a presenting sponsor of the Ascension Charity Classic. They have created Access Point, which builds diversity in the IT workforce. This is a game changer in our community. Literally, hundreds of mostly young African-American women are getting fifty to $60,000 per year jobs right out of high school, and that training begins in high school. Darty Business Solutions believes talent is equally distributed, but access to that opportunity is not. Ron Darty, our founder at Darty Business Solutions, is the chair of the 2023 Heart Ball, supporting local the local American Heart Association Foundation. These are just a few examples of the positive things Darty Business Solutions is doing right now in our community. Hey, this is Jay Delsing for SSM Health Physical Therapy. Our golf program has the same screening techniques and technology as the pros on the PGA Tour use. SSM Health Physical Therapy has the Titleist Performance Institute trained physical therapists that can perform the TPI screening on you as well as use the KVEST 3D motion capture system. Proper posture, alignment, etc. can help you keep your game right down the middle. We have 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. To connect with Jay, log on to jdelsinggolf.com. You'll see the latest in equipment, find the latest innovations in golf, and get tips from a PGA professional. That's jdelsinggolf.com. The official vehicle provider of the Golf with Jay Delsing show is the Dean Team. The Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. They provide me, Pearlie, and our families with all of our cars. The reason we went with the Dean Team is because we could trust them. We knew at the Dean Team they were going to take care of us, and they have. They made the entire car buying experience so simple. It was more than just simply selling us a vehicle. The Dean Team made our car buying experience seamless and enjoyable throughout that entire process. The Dean Team has the complete car buying steps done before you head into their showroom. They're ready to answer all your questions and set your mind at ease when buying a vehicle. At the Dean Team, they offer new, pre-owned, and all the services included with your Dean Team purchase. When you're with the Dean Team, they become lifelong friends. The Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood, located at Manchester Road in Kirkwood. The Dean Team. This is the Front Nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. 
The Front Nine is presented by the Ascension Charity Classic, September 5th through the 10th at Norwood Hills Country Club. Find out more at ascensioncharityclassic.com. Hey, welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Happy New Year from Pearly and I. Pearly, what's going on? You ready for the Front Nine? Absolutely, Jay. I got my notes, all the research done. We are ready to roll. All right. The Front Nine is brought to you by the Ascension Charity Classic. Folks, this year, our third year, um, September 5th through 10th, Norwood Hills, Padre Harrington, defending champ. It's going to be a lot of fun. Get your tickets. We've also got the Darty Business Solutions is the presenting and title sponsor of the Advocate PGA event. Uh, so stay tuned for more information about that. It's not going to be the week of the event like it was this year, um, but it's really going to be special. So let's check it out. All right, John, one of the things that we talked about as we wrap up the year 2022, a lot of things happened. John, we've never talked more golf than we have in 2022. Give me a couple of your top hitters, some of the things that um, just stuck out in your mind for 2022. Well, the one I wanted to talk about first is uh, not probably not the biggest, but it's important and it's and it happened first and it's a positive. That's that's the kind of the breakout of Scotty Scheffler. Here's a guy that was a good player, but I, I have to say I'm not sure who saw him coming as far as a world beater. And man, between the Phoenix Open, Bay Hill, the match play event, and the Masters, before the end of the Masters, he showed his uh, he showed what he can do, and he's kind of stayed hot for the most part. John, I agree. And, you know, Cam Smith had a huge breakout year himself. I mean, he won the British Open, finished 64 on Sunday at St. Andrews with a closing back nine of 31. He also won the Players' Championship. And then on the negative side of that, he defects to live. Yeah, well, that's obviously one of the main stories of, of if not the main story of 2022, how it, how it erupts and kind of changes so many things. It disrupts things, but it also really forced the hand of the PGA to make some major changes that we've discussed from time to time. No, no question, John. The PGA Tour's got a lot of things on their plate right now, and it's interesting, John. I had a couple of other kind of, um, as one guy kind of went up, another guy was kind of <clears throat> come crashing down, and and I looked at it as uh, Rory had this ascent. He finishes the 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 year as um, world number one. And then Phil has just drifted off into kind of almost a scary oblivion, hasn't he? Well, I would say that he may have put the final fork in himself uh, in 2022. That's Phil Mickelson. I would say, I agree, Jay. I think he was teetering on problems, but I think he may have done himself in this year. Yeah, he, he absolutely did. And then, John, my last little happening from, from 2022 was they did, Liv has definitely gotten Tiger more involved in – Everything golf, in, in my opinion. And, and we also got kind of a glimpse at really how bad his right leg is. Because, John, and I'll talk about this later and what, what to look for in 2023, but I really feel like, and, and I don't know if he's ever even going to play Champions Tour golf where he can ride a cart, but I really feel like this is, um, there, there's not a whole lot in the tank left for him in terms of walking and competing on the PGA Tour. Well, that's what I put as one of my top moments. I think by the end of the year, as much as we were all rooting for Tiger and Tiger's trying like heck, to me, it, it got fairly clear by the end of the year, he just can't, he can still play wonderful golf. He can still have great golf shots, but I just don't know that he can handle the physical rigors of a, of a major, let alone any regular tour event. So I think that was another thing that was quite clear by the end of the year. I, I do. I'm spot on, Pearl. I'm, I'm right there with you. It's really going to be interesting. I, I cannot believe how much, Personally, I'm rooting for Tiger Woods. You know, we've talked about this for, I mean, Pearl, this is, believe it or not, the start of our fifth year, which is just incredible that um, that this has been going on for five years and folks are listening still. But, John, uh, we have counted him out probably between the two of us, what do you think, 12, 15 times? Oh, uh, between the two of us, <laughs> I think that's easy. Hey, you made me have a big smile when you told me this is going into year five. Unbelievable, but but a lot of fun. But hey, Jay, there's some other real positives. You know, one of the things you and I talked about that happened in 2022 was Rory stepping up to be the voice of what I've called the voice of professional golf. Yeah, I, I absolutely. He's he rose to the occasion. He he his his responsibilities, his answers, the way he handled himself was just spectacular. And and his train was heading north, and Phil's was heading south. I I. I I couldn't be more uh, pleased to have someone like Rory kind of handling that mantle for us. 
Well, and then for him to be playing the way he's playing, look at what a phenomenal year he had. And if not for a cold putter in the British Open, he could have notched that one as well. One other thing, go make your thought, because I got one other thing that I think is a pretty big deal that we might miss or a lot of people might miss for what happened in 2022. Yeah, and so for, in, in terms of Rory's cold putter, I mean, he still shot under par in the back nine on Sunday afternoon of a major championship. I mean, it's it's it, it all goes back. He did have opportunities. He did have putts he could have hold. But, I mean, in my mind, Cam Smith really won the tournament. I'm not going to say Rory lost that tournament like so often oh, happens. I wouldn't say it either, but you and I just know when you look at the finer points of, of Rory's game and, and his putting, when he can get that club head to release, he's a whole different player. He, no matter what he tried that final round, he just couldn't get it to release. Nope. It was stuck. It was stuck. All right, Pro, you get a closing shot for 2022. Well, well, the closing shot that I think, you know, it is something to look at the same time for 2023 coming down the pike. But a big thing that I ha- thought happened was one of the hottest players in the world, one of the biggest, most exciting up-and-comers, Will Zell Torres, getting hurt and just literally having to walk from the game. And probably a pretty major, from what it sounds like, a pretty major injury. You know, who knows if we're ever going to see him play at that level again. Yeah, we sure hope so. We know that he's uh, we know that he's going to come out, I think, at the century is what I read. And It'll be interesting to see because he, you know, adheres very strongly to the decade golf and uh, and that whole higher metrics uh, way of playing the game. And it's kind of, I'd say, really the poster child for that. Well, it's for sure. But the, the major back injury, it's tough to get those fixed 100 percent. But I, we, we're both huge fans. I sure as heck hope we get to see him get back to where he was and beyond because I think he was one of the absolute major up and comers. Oh, absolutely. What a, what a record he had in the major championships this past year. So, John, let's go to our next topic. Augusta National just last week came out with their letter and their invitations to the 2023 Masters. And basically, John, basically it said the guys, they're going to adhere to the old standards and anybody – that fell within those standards is going to be able to play in the 2023 event. They probably didn't have much choice, John. Well, if you remember, you know those commercials where it's kind of a funny commercial and somebody's done something, the other one says, let's throw the flag to get their instant replay. I think if you play back one or two or three of our shows, that's much of what we talked about was, was probably the masters. Obviously they're going to lead the way because of the time that their, that their event is, but also they did the right thing. I think this gives them the least exposure. They are obviously already embroiled in lawsuits, but it gives them the least exposure. And the bottom line is they want the strongest field in the world to be at their event, and I think they've accomplished both. They absolutely did. Now, here's something that I thought very interesting. You know, I read this golf stuff thoroughly and remember about half of what I should. But anyway, John, this is a quote from the letter that they wrote. Champions like Sarah's and Nelson, Hogan, Sneed, Palmer – player Watson, Nicholas, Woods have become heroes to golfers of all ages. They have inspired some to follow in their footsteps and so many others to play and enjoy the game. They have supported the sport and thus all who benefit from it. They have shown respect for those who came before them and blazed a trail for future generations. Golf is better because of them. And here it goes, John. Regrettably, Recent actions have divided men's professional golf by diminishing the virtues of the game and the meaningful legacies of those who built it. Although we are disappointed in these developments, our focus is to honor the tradition of bringing together a preeminent field of golfers this coming April. Pretty big words right there, Pearl. When you break that down, they take a, an unabridged shot at LIV. Well, I think they should, and I think it's a great way that they've handled it. And, you know, let's remember, the Masters, the Augusta National, is is uh, not unused to a controversy through the years. They've had some major ones laid at their doorstep, and they normally handle it somewhere between very well and extremely well, and I think they're handling this one extremely well. I guess only time will tell for sure. Right, they, Pearl, and this, is, this will wrap up our segment, and this is how they wrapped up their letter. We have reached a seminal point in the history of our sport. At Augusta National, we have faith that golf, which has overcome many challenges throughout the years, will endure again. Amen to that. Amen to the way that what you said about that. They're taking the high road, and I love it. Absolutely. Once again, they're leading the way, which is, I guess, the way it should be. And uh, if everybody follows suit, we're probably going to be in pretty good shape here. 
Absolutely. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. John and I will be back for the back nine, but this wraps up the front nine. This is Golf with Jay Delson. That was the front nine, presented by the Ascension Charity Classic. Coming up, it's the back nine and more of golf with Jay Delsing. This is Jay Delsing. Did you know that Marcone is the largest authorized appliance parts distributor in the world? That's right, the largest in the world. Did you know that Marcone is based right here in our backyard of St. Louis, Missouri? Well, that's pretty impressive. What's more impressive is the way that they give back to the St. Louis community and our region. CEO Jim Sowers has donated service dogs to the wounded servicemen and women of our armed forces. Suites at St. Louis Blues Games have been donated and auctioned off in which all proceeds were given to the backstoppers. Then there was the Marcone Police and Firefighters Viewing Deck at the Ascension Charity Classic this past year. It was a huge success. So much so that it's being implemented on other tour stops around on the PGA Tour. To Jim Sowers and his incredible team at Marcone, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Marcone, a proud sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. The Legends of Golf return to St. Louis in 2023. You won't want to miss one of the strongest fields in golf. Ernie Els, Steve Stricker, Bernard Longer, John Daly, and many more when they compete for the 2023 Ascension Charity Classic title, September 5th through the 10th at historic Norwood Hills Country Club. All proceeds benefit area charities. Together, we were able to donate over $1 million to those most in need last year. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com. Hello, friends. This is Jim Nance, and you are listening to Golf with my friend, Jay Delson. This is Jay Delson, and I've spent a lifetime in golf. And when it comes to playing the game of golf, the dining experience of a club, the amenities a club has to offer, or a family atmosphere, there's no place in Missouri like Whitmore Country Club. At Whitmore Country Club, there are two 18-hole championship golf courses. The membership there also provides access to 90 holes of golf in total. There's a 4,000-square-foot fitness center with 24-hour access. There's three premium tennis courts, two massive outdoor swimming pools. There's junior programs for golf, swimming, and tennis, and the best upscale and casual dining you'll find in the Metro St. Louis area. It's a club where you will feel comfortable. A club where family and friends come and get together and really feel at home. Whitmore Country Club. Find out more at whitmoregolf.com. That's whitmoregolf.com. This is the Back Nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The Back Nine is presented by Pro-Am Golf, located in Brentwood. See what Pro-Am Golf can do for you. All right, John, we are going to the Back Nine, and we appreciate the the support from the Pro-Am Golf folks, 314-647-8054. They're the presenting sponsor of this Back Nine segment. You got fitted with CJ. I got fitted with CJ. We got our buddy Luke McLaughlin fitted with CJ. You got to see the way Luke is hitting his driver. It's about three and a quarter down the middle. Uh, it's pretty impressive. He's a decade golf guy for sure, isn't he? Yep, yep. He's, uh, oh my gosh, he's going to be so fun to watch. All right, so so Pearl, this part of the show, we're going to talk about a couple of players that we want to look out for going into 2023. And I'm going to go first because I'm picking the most, and at least in my opinion, the most obvious one, and I'm picking Tom Kim. I mean, what 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 happened at the end of the year with Tom Kim? He wins the last tournament of the year to to become a full fledged member of the PGA Tour. He wins down at Greensboro. He wins the last tournament of the year. He goes out, John, and has an absolute rock star presence and play in the Presidents Cup. And you got to remember, the U.S. won handily. And for someone on the other side to stick out so much so like he did in, in such a way, his golf really did a lot of the talking. And I, I'm just impressed to see, um, you know, where he goes and what he does from here. 
Well, he's definitely on my players to watch list. I'm not sure about the upper echelon of the top two or three guys, although it wouldn't overly surprise me, but I'm with you. Plus, Jay, we need somebody with that level of, of character, of enthusiasm, uh, of, of bringing that kind of energy uh, to the golf course. And, and he's just got the big smile. He's a, he's a big, lo- lovable guy, and he can flat, flat play. And he's all of, what, 21 years old, I think, John. And he's a South Korean, which, you know, we've talked about and noted how um, it's just a matter of time before more and more of the South Korean men make their mark on the PGA Tour. Similarly, to it'll, it'll remain to be seen how what sort of inroads they do make on the PGA Tour, but we know that the South Koreans have absolutely taken over the LPGA Tour, especially the top third. Well, I think the Asian uh, Asian group in general is going to. We've talked about this. It's it's a little bit slower with the guys tour, but it, like you said, it's more than affected the ladies tour. So I think we're going to see more and more coming uh, that way. It just makes it more of a world tour. It uh, makes everybody work harder, and it just brings more and more talent to the forefront. I, I think it's just fantastic. No, I feel the same way. All right, Pearl. Who else do you have on your list? Who else should we look out for in twenty twenty three? I'll tell you, Jay. At the top of my list is Rory. I'm just excited about him. I just think he's found his, his groove. He's got the family thing uh, going. It seems like very well for himself. He's playing up the storm. He had a phenomenal year. He's the, kind of the spokesman, as we talked about, the unofficial spokesman for professional golf, at least on this end of the uh, stick, the PGA end. And uh, it's just tough to, say, to see where it's going to go wrong there. I think he's just going to be in the hunt. I guess at the end of the day, if he can get to that next level, making a few more putts, I don't know who beats him. I think, John, I think you're right. I think what we saw him, obviously the way he putts determines a lot about the way he finishes. But we saw him take some strides and and really stabilize some of the other parts of his game where, I mean, it it seemed like he never finished out of the top five in the the last two or three months of 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 the year. I, I, I generally think you're right. I, that's what I mean. I think the whole thing, I think, though, to, to truly win and get on a, on a real Tiger-like streak, you're going to have to make some putts. And he's not a bad putter. It's just that you get those dreaded ones that they all look good, but they don't go in like at the end of the British Open. But, I, you know, he's gotten past that more than once. It, just one or two more times when he gets that next level of confidence. And I, I think it's Katie bar the doors. I have on my list... Colin Morikawa, I I feel like here's a guy that just came charging out of the gates first couple years, and then last year he went winless. And, you know, did we put too high of expectations on this young guy? He's got a great game. He's got the sort of game, John, in my opinion, that just looks like it could be around forever. It just looks so, so consistent. But he didn't get in the winner's circle this year, and by all accounts – you know, he'd consider it a down year. Well, I think he absolutely would. I guess the, another name that I've got that I would have to put well ahead of him, I'm certainly a Colin Morikawa fan. He's a heck of a player, but I don't know where his confidence is. But I think somebody whose confidence is on the rise and I think is taking that next level of maybe it's the right where's maturity, I'm not sure, but it's Justin Thomas. I think that there's another guy that is just right, right on the edge. I think. Once in a while, he'd get a little complaining and some issues out there. I think he's kind of taken that next step. And if he has, I think, again, watch out. And it would be so much fun to see him and Rory going uh, head-to-head with a couple other guys that you and I have on our list here. You know, John, it's, when I look at this list, and we, you know, we've conferred and looked at lists before we got on the air, and it, it, I just have to say what great hands – professional golf is in with these young guys. And one guy who I really pull for is Ricky Fowler, and he's hit some pretty low lows. Um, really, he, he got off to a good start at the end of last of 2022, and now the wraparound season and things like that are, are, are going to start. But I'm really looking to see Ricky come back. I'm going to predict win a tournament in 2023. Well, I hope you're right. That would that would bring the whole thing. That'd get that younger group with the flat build caps going going crazy again. I got my other guy on here though that I don't think uh, Ricky Fowler can beat is Tony Finau, another guy that took a couple major steps last year. Really got some confidence built up for a couple reasons. One, he started uh, making a few more putts, and two, he had he had an event or two where the field kind of backed up, which doesn't happen too often, to kind of let him through the door. 
And I think when you kind of get a sense that I can play my best and win and I can play maybe not my best and win, you, it brings you to the next level of confidence. And I think uh, Tony Finau was absolutely in that position. And he bombs it. And he's just kind of that casual guy with that next level of, uh, of confidence. Again, I see him in the mix, and I think it could be awesome to watch. No, there's no question. I mean, he's won three events in 2022, and, you know, they count towards 2023, John. It's a, it's an amazing thing, and I think you hit the nail on the head. He had so many good events prior to this year where he just got outlasted. He played a lot of great golf, maybe didn't make a few birdies coming down the stretch, and someone else did, and they just got nudged at the finish line. But when you can go out there and, and kind of maintain like he did, Pearl, and do some of those things and still come out with the win, that's a game changer in terms of confidence. You know it is. It's it's a huge piece of it. If you don't feel like you've got to play your best all the time to win, uh, you have a completely different attitude out there. Absolutely. Well, that's going to wrap up the back nine. Uh, but don't go anywhere. John and I will be back for the 19th hole. And remember, the Golf with Jay Delsing show is brought to you by Darty Business Solutions. This has been the back nine presented by Pro-Am Golf. We'll make the turn into the clubhouse and head into the 19th hole. That's next on Golf with Jay Delsing. Powers Insurance and Risk Management combines 200 years of experience and cutting-edge products to deliver exceptional service, value, and clarity to their clients. Powers Insurance will deliver the highest quality property and casual insurance programs and strategic planning consultation services in the industry. Insurance can be overwhelming and confusing. It can be tough to understand. Powers Insurance simplifies it for you and your business. Powers Insurance and Risk Management will partner with you by providing ongoing assistance, consultation, and service that will help you control your insurance expenses and your workplace safety. Find out how Powers Insurance can help you. Visit powersinsurance.com. That's powersinsurance.com. Hi, this is Peter Jacobson, and you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. I want to just uh, answer a couple of questions that I've received in the mailbag. Folks, keep these questions coming. They're fantastic. Jay at jdelsingolf.com. Uh, and I'll get to them. Uh, the first one says, what should I do in cold weather to improve my putting? You know, and this is a real challenge because we can't get outdoors and we can't get outside. But here's what I'm going to tell you to do. Get yourself in front of a mirror, a face-fronting mirror. So your your face, as you look up uh, from your putting stance, you're going to be right in front of the mirror. And I want you to watch in the mirror, and I want you to make different lengths of stroke where your backstroke and your through stroke are relatively the same distance. Folks, when I see people screw their putting up is they get their backstroke and their through stroke really mismatched. If anything is going to be slightly longer, you can have your backstroke slightly longer than your through stroke. But try to mirror both sides of the ball. That will absolutely help your putting. Here's the next question from Josh. Josh says, simply put, what's the best strength exercise a golfer can do? Josh, great question. We've talked about this before. Any sort of stretching, and I know this is kind of a pain in the ass and it's not exciting, but folks, especially as you age, if you can stay flexible, you can stay strong. And in golf, flexibility is probably the biggest key. So keep your hamstring stretched, get a club, get a band and put it um, behind your, your back and stretch your shoulders out. You'll know your body wherever you are not um, uh, very flexible, try to get that way. And for, I would say for most men, especially it's in their hamstrings. So if it's getting your butt on the ground and getting a towel on the back end of your foot and stretching those hamstrings out, that can really, really, really come in handy. The next question is from Sarah from Wentzville. I realize you were in competition with a group of guys on the PGA Tour, but was there a player that you enjoyed playing with the most? 
You know what, Sarah? I really enjoyed my time playing with Fuzzy Zeller. He was a super relaxed, fun guy to play with. Told a lot of jokes. We played fast. I also enjoyed Joey Sindelar quite a bit and uh, my good buddy Olin Brown. We seemed to get paired a lot, and uh, it was really, really fun. Guys I didn't like to play with that much, Scott Hoke would come to the top of the list. Hey, Scott, I love you, but sorry, you were a complete pain in the ass to play with. Uh, Great question, Sarah. And um, Jay, I love your show, and this is from Pete. Uh, Thanks, Pete. What was your favorite event that you ever played in? Pete, my favorite place to go play golf is the Monterey Peninsula and play in at Pebble Beach. So I got to play in the AT&T National Pebble Beach Pro-Am 26 years in a row, and and that was an absolute treat. Here more locally, Pete, I love the John Deere Classic that was in Quad Cities. Great people, great Midwestern flavor, and you were in a small town, and it really felt like you were making a difference in their community. So I loved playing there. And then in terms of a golf course, man, I loved, always loved going to Muirfield Village in Dublin, Ohio, uh, outside of Columbus. It was a a great venue. Jack Nicklaus knew how to run a tournament and put on an an event, and the golf course was spectacular. In terms of where I played my best, no question about it. Memphis, Tennessee, baby. Four hours down the road. Loved my drive down Highway 55, and I I probably should have won that tournament a couple of times. Folks, thanks for all the great emails. Keep them coming, please. Jay at jdelsingolf.com, and we have the 19th hole coming up. I love having Doherty Business Solutions as the title sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing show. You already know that they're the number one largest IT consulting firm and the largest software developer in the St. Louis region. You also know that there are over 2,500 Doherty teammates in 30 states and three countries around the world. But what you may not be aware of is what Doherty Business Solutions does right here in our own community. They were the sponsor for the first Advocate PGA event at Glen Echo this past September. Doherty Business Solutions was also a presenting sponsor of the Ascension Charity Classic. They have created Access Point, which builds diversity in the IT workforce. This is a game changer in our community. Literally, hundreds of mostly young African-American women are getting fifty dollars to $60,000 per year jobs right out of high school, and that training begins in high school. Darty Business Solutions believes talent is equally distributed, but access to that opportunity is not. Ron Darty, our founder at Darty Business Solutions, is the chair of the 2023 Heart Ball, supporting local the local American Heart Association Foundation. These are just a few examples of the positive things Darty Business Solutions is doing right now in our community. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. To connect with Jay, log on to jdelsinggolf.com. You'll see the latest in equipment, find the latest innovations in golf, and get tips from a PGA professional. That's jdelsinggolf.com. The Legends of Golf return to St. Louis in 2023. You won't want to miss one of the strongest fields in golf. Ernie Els, Steve Stricker, Bernard Longer, John Daly, and many more when they compete for the 2023 Ascension Charity Classic title, September 5th through the 10th at historic Norwood Hills Country Club. All proceeds benefit area charities. Together, we were able to donate over $1 million to those most in need last year. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com. This is Golf with Jay Delsing, and let's head to the 19th hole. Hey, welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing, brought to you by Darty Business Solutions. I got Pearly with me, and we are headed to the 19th hole. Um, so, all right, so John, this is really going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to this segment. Um, we are going to break down the top four or five things um, that we are looking forward to in 2023 and uh oh my gosh man i don't i don't even know where to start. i'll let you 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 kick, you kick us off bro well let's let's get started in a place where we know it's going to be a big deal but we can get it behind us in this conversation right here and that's what's going to happen with live we know what the next step is with the masters granted but even within the masters jay with live how are those players going to be received by the public now if there's a place that's a safe place to be see, be received well and, and treated 
appropriately and professionally, it would be at Augusta National. But that's one for me that I'm really interested to see. Phil Mickelson, how he's going to be received. Dustin Johnson, et cetera, down the, down the, down the rungs. I think there's about, what is it, nine or ten guys, Jay, off the live that are going to be playing in uh, the Masters? Yeah, you you got Mickelson, DJ, Garcia, um, Patrick Reed, DeChambeau, um, Charles Schwartzel, um, oh gosh, and, and I know uh, uh, Neiman, Joaquin Neiman is one of those players. So so yeah, Pearl, there's a, there's around eight to ten, and, and it's it's just going to be interesting. So let, let let's talk about this for a second. When you're consistently playing a shotgun start. Now, for a year's period of time, a shotgun start that consists of three rounds of competitive golf. I am just going to tell you that it makes a difference between going to four rounds. It, it's, it's not a switch you can just flip off. It's off and on. It's going to be interesting, John, to see if and when and how these live players are um, – perform and john what will it mean to the game if for example cam smith wins a major what will that mean (laughs) what will that look like i'll tell you jay i think that's the type of stuff why it's so compelling for this next year uh it's just it's just crazy and you got to believe an awful lot of fans like you and i anyway that are not for the for live we're going to be sitting in our seats at home or we're lucky enough to be walking the ropes at the event and kind of I have to say, root. I don't root against guys generally, but I'm not going to be rooting for those guys. I, I don't want to see a live guy win it because it's just just another piece to add to the whole thing. And by the way, these guys that are in the field because of their in the top uh, numbers in the world or previous winners, it's a big, big, big deal for them in these majors that they do get in because that's really the, the few chances they've got to maintain their world ranking get points. Uh, what is it, Jay, in the Masters? You have to finish the top 24 to be invited back again. Right. So the pressure is kind of doubled and tripled down on those guys to perform if they want to come out and come again in the future. Well, there's no question, and I didn't even mention Kepka. And, you know, here's a guy that's won four majors, Pearl, and talked about, you know, he, he, he was flying around all that BS. I don't practice. I don't do this. I don't do that, you know, and, and, and some of the smack that he used to talk about. Now, you know, John, his lip be- if the live guys become – irrelevant when it comes to golf conversations it just i don't know it, it's it's just a real interesting mix and i i try to play this thing forward obviously not smart enough to try to figure to be able to figure it out pro but i wonder where do we go how does this thing get how does this thing work itself out so we can get the best players in the world playing together more often again i don't know yeah well that's that's why we got to watch in 2023 to see what happens. But when they're not on the PGA tour and they're playing sporadically on that other tour that very few people are watching, of course, you're going to lose your name recognition. It's a, uh, it's a big deal. Even people like, like Kepka and Bryson DeChambeau, you just don't hear much about those guys anymore. And, and there's a reason for it. So we'll see what happens in that, but let's put that behind us and get to some of the other things that are super exciting, but again, affected by, uh, what happens with Liv. Okay, Pearl, I'm going to jump in here next, and I'm going to talk about I am super interested in anything Tiger. So the the biggest reason and the thing that got me the most fired up about this was watching what, you know, he got plantar fasciitis, and that's one thing, but but listening to him talk and some of and, – and he may be a little coy when it comes to some of this stuff, John, but you know what's interesting – I really feel like there are not that many events left for him to be able to compete and win on the PGA Tour. And I got to tell you, I'm all about it. I can't wait. I love when he's in the field. I think it's just an it's just a better field and it's it's an exciting event. And what he does and brings to the game, it's incredible. So I am all in on anything Tiger for 2023. Well, I am too. I just don't think we're going to be able to see much. I think physically, there's just too many things going around. His old injuries, his new injuries, the newest injuries. Uh, it, it's tough. You know, it's kind of showing people how much of a demand playing the PGA Tour actually is. It's not just walking down the middle of the fairway playing golf. There's an awful lot to it to play at that level. And unfortunately, he's got a half dozen things working against him. Well, you know, John, it, it's uh, I, I agree. And, and it's it's... 
I, I think we've taken a lot for granted, and a guy like Tiger comes along so infrequently, and um, all that he's done for the game and, and the way that he's done it is um, – uh, it just it, it it really makes you appreciate it, and I just don't know what we're gonna get left. I still have this feeling, some way, somehow, he's going to knock off some other event. I don't know about a major, but some other event <laughs> to get over the Sam Snead tie. I just don't see them tied at the end of this thing. Well, if he goes and wins the live event, could he? Will that count? No. Okay, well, they're not, I'm not sure. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm voting for him, too. I've acknowledged that I've counted him out, and I've been wrong every, uh, yeah, every single time. Every single time, yeah, pretty much. But once, once again, I'm going to go down that, down that road and say it's not going to happen again. Hey, one other thing I want to make sure we talk about. we got a Ryder Cup coming up this year when we talk about things that are going on in 2023. Again, there'll be issues relative to the live players, et cetera, et cetera. But what an exciting year. Every Ryder Cup year is an exciting year, and this year is in Italy. Which is which is remarkable when you think about they had the last Ryder Cup in the European soil. John was in France at Le Golf Club de Nationale, and then now they go to Italy. And it's I just think you know, John, a lot of this is happening because Francesco Molinari and went in the British Open. I promise you that you know opened up so many doors and said, yeah, we got to get this thing in front of these Italian sports fans, and. What is that going to look like, John? And here's an interesting question. The voids that live players have created, those gaps, those holes, who's going to step in? We all know what happens in nature when there's vacuums. They get filled. That's what's going to happen on the PGA Tour, and it's going to happen on the on the European side and the Euros. It's really, really going to be interesting to see what happens. There's, there's no doubt about it, and I can't even begin to predict, but uh, that's why I think it's just one of those things that there's going to be a lot talked about this year with it. It's going to be a big deal, and again, we'll see where the whole live situation, how that all kind of comes together. Jay, sorry, remind me, who runs the Ryder Cup? Isn't it the PGA? Right, no, it's the PGA of America, not the PGA Yeah, PGA Tour. of America. Yeah, so they, PGA get, of America. yeah, so they get together, and the um, uh, and then the European side has an entire entity that takes care of the Europeans and they have their point system. And um, it's already been determined that the live guys are not going to get to play unless something changes there, John, there's going to be a lot of big names. Ian, how about not having Sergio Garcia and Ian Poulter play on the European side? That's a massive hole to fill. Well, I, you know, and I saw an article, whether they're questioning whether or not, uh, Sergio would be playing any way you look at it. So that's kind of the other thing, right? Some of those live guys are towards the end of their career, be it their age or their injuries or their capabilities. And I think Poulter's another one of those guys. Yeah, he's a heck of a Ryder Cup player. But, you know, year after year, as the years go on, he's less and less effective out there and has a tougher and tougher time making the team. So it's going to be going to be interesting again. I, I bet it's going to be a spectacular venue. I'm not familiar with the venue. I've played some golf in Italy, some of the best golf I've played in my life. It's a gorgeous country. And there's going to be a lot of pomp and circumstance, and I'm sure old Constantino Roca's name will pop up from time to time, too. Oh, absolutely. Pro, you played the European Tour over there. You played the European Tour events there, didn't you? I played the Italian Tour event over there, and I, I became a Lillianaire, Jay. I won 7.2 million lira, so I, which I think was like five grand. And what kind of millionaire <laughs> celebration did you have? Did you have a $5,000 celebration, or did you have a Well, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't leave the country with much. I didn't have to pay any taxes, so I, I, I think it was a good celebration. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that was coming. Um, so what? So tell me a little bit about the uh, Italian beer over there. Is that – because I know you're a beer guy. Uh, I like the Italian beer. I'll tell you, Jay, just – we were in Florence, Italy for most of the time, Florence, and uh, it was just phenomenal with the history – the statues, the architecture, the, the culture, it, it was phenomenal. And I'm sure we're going to get steeped in that during the uh, Ryder Cup for this year in a gorgeous place. It's a place I want to take Sally at some point because I think it's just a beautiful country. But, again, so many things going on in the world, and the, the, the uh, Ryder Cup on top of that going into there, I think there's just going to be a lot to watch and of great interest, and hopefully we see, and I'm sure we will see, some spectacular golf. Absolutely, absolutely. John, I am really – going to be interested in how Phil Mickelson is received in the world of golf when he plays, comes back and plays the majors. And John, will he get a special invite to the U S open? Wow. 
I don't think so. I don't think so I don't either. Think so. I don't think so either. I think he's going to have to get lucky to get a special invite to some birthday parties. I think it's. Uh, oh wait, Jana, I messed that up. He's going to get into the U.S. Open because he won the PGA two years ago. Never mind. He's in already. Oh, so he's, so he's already qualified, and they're yep. going to stick with the same way the Masters is doing it. We assume so. We assume so. Yeah, we yep. assume so. Yep. Yeah. And and so that means he'll, Phil will be in. So so I go right back to it. I want Because he did play in the U.S. Open at, uh, at Brookline um, with Matthew Fitzpatrick won, and uh, obviously missed a cut and headed out of town in a hurry. But um, it'll be interesting to see what that looks like for Phil and um, and all the shenanigans that he brings to the table. It's not going to be pretty, in my opinion. It's not going to be pretty. I hope he gets really humble, and I hope he plays well, but I think it's going to be a tough thing. He's very much at the end of his career. But, again, what was it? Not much more than – it wasn't only a year ago that he surprised us with the, at the PGA, so who knows, Jay? Yeah, the, guy, the man's got so, uh, untold amounts of talent and game, and I'm with you too, Pearl. Give him a slice of humble pie and a little bit of humil- humility, and let's see how how well he 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 can be received and and can do. You know, Jen, um, gosh, if you, unless you have another quick hit, I, that is going to wrap up. I got a quick one. I got a quick one. Beautiful. No, I don't want to go past this one. My highlight for next year is caddying for you in the Ascension Classic, and mostly cracking the whip on you until then to make sure you're ready. Are you going to be ready? I'm going to be ready. Hell yeah, I'm going to be ready. I can't wait to play. I know I'm going to get to play. September fifth through tenth, Norwood Hills Ascension Charity Classic. I can't wait. I'm well, have, I'll be I'll be carrying the bag. I'm doing my laps already. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to have to crack the whip on you, I, and, and you know because I, I, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. If somehow I'm going to figure out a way to blame you for whatever happens out there. I'm used to it. I can handle that part. <laughs> I know you got a strong back, Pearl. That's going to wrap up another show. Thanks for being with me. Enjoyed it, Jay. Merry Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Absolutely. Let's knock them dead in 2023. The Golf with Jay Delsing show is brought to you by Darty Business Solutions. We appreciate the support and hit them straight, St. Louis. Hey, do you like wine? Have you heard about the hottest new wine bar in St. Louis? It's called Wild Crush Wine Bar, and it's located in town and country on Clayton Road, just behind the Strops. Have you ever experienced self-dispensing wine machines? Well, they are here. The only place in St. Louis and most of Missouri that you'll find them, and it's at Wild Crush. You can choose your size of pour, and Wild Crush will pour the freshest wine in the area for you. The organic argon gas system used at Wild Crush keeps this wine pristinely fresh for up to 60 days. So if you're tired of drinking wine that's been open for a few days, come into Wild Crush for the best and freshest wine selection in the area. Go to wildcrushstl.com and come have one with us. This is Jay Delsing, and if you're like me, you're always looking for the best ways to improve your game. That means getting the best, most up-to-date equipment you can find in golf. You can find that equipment at Pro-Am Golf. Pro-Am Golf is located in Brentwood, And since Pro-Am Golf opened in 1975, they have been more than just selling golf equipment. Pro-Am Golf is dedicated to helping build your game inside and out. Pro-Am Golf can custom fit all your clubs specifically to your build. They offer private one-on-one lessons and they carry golf gear for every part of your game. That means clubs, balls, shoes, apparel, accessories from all the major brands. I get asked all the time by golfers, Where should I go get fitted for clubs? And I tell everyone to head to Pro-Am Golf. They're the best in town. And make sure you ask for CJ. That's Pro-Am Golf. Visit ProAmGolfUSA.com. That's ProAmGolfUSA.com. Hey, this is Jay Delsing for SSM Health Physical Therapy. Our golf program has the same screening techniques and technology as the pros on the PGA Tour use. SSM Health Physical Therapy has the Titleist Performance Institute trained physical therapists that can perform the TPI screening on you as well as use the KVEST 3D motion capture system. Proper posture, alignment, etc. can help you keep your game right down the middle. We have 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion.
listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. To connect with Jay, log on to jdelsinggolf.com. You'll see the latest in equipment, find the latest innovations in golf, and get tips from a PGA professional. That's jdelsinggolf.com. You've been listening to Golf with Jay Delsing.